Valley's Gold is produced through a partnership between the Fresno County Farm Bureau and Valley PBS. Production of this program is made possible in part by a grant from E and J Gallo Winery. Agriculture, it's the economic engine that drives this region. On this episode of Valley's Gold, we're taking a look at the California olive industry, from the tree, to the table, to the bottle. So join me, Ryan Jacobson, as we press on with the show. We've started our morning out in Clovis, where we're gonna take a look at table olives. With me, I have Pat Ricuti. Pat, thanks for joining me this morning. Thank you, Ryan. My pleasure. Good well, morning. Pat, let's talk a little bit about your uh, family history. Your grandfather started this place back a number of years ago. Yes, yes. Uh, he came over from uh, the old country in Italy, from Bichelli, Italy in 1914, and uh, ultimately settled here in the Fresno Clovis area and uh, started to farm. Uh, he started by uh, being a uh, a uh, farm worker and uh, worked the whole family and uh, slowly grew and put his money away and invested into into farmland and and did it the very very hard way. They all worked very hard. Well, we started about 40 years ago uh, planting the table olives and uh, and the this is one of the orchards that we have and uh, it's uh, developed very nicely. Uh, the only downside of it is it's very highly uh, labor intensive and uh, it's very expensive to, to get the crop uh, to market. Uh, they are canning olives and uh, they're unique in uh, how uh, we grow them and prune them. Uh, my father has taken uh, a lot of uh, our Italian heritage and, and cultural practices uh, from Italy. We do uh, heavy inside pruning and we, we top the uh, trees so we can keep them lower to the ground with less uh, uh, ladder uh, usage and uh, minimize the, the higher costs of the labor. You talked about it. We're right in the mid-October right now during the harvest season. We have harvest going on around us. Uh, the pruning typically takes place during the winter time, correct? Yes. Um, but talk about growing process the rest of the year. Um, these do bloom and the process from that point. Sometime in May is when we have bloom and it's a very critical and sensitive time because if you get weather between 95 and 100 degrees or over 100, uh, you can drop your whole crop. Oh wow. And, and uh, it will abort the bloom and, uh, and cause crop failure. And we've had that happen uh, a number of different times. So you never know that you've got a crop until you're actually picking it and getting it into the market. Well, Pat, we see these gorgeous olives in back of us here. Explain a little bit of difference between the table olive and the olive oil. Is it different varieties, or we can see the same thing between those? Well, you can utilize these kind, of, this variety of olives for olive oil as well as most all olives. Uh, however, the olives that we plant specifically for olive oil today, they're more conducive to machine harvesting and uh, contain more oil. And that's what we try to capture is the higher oil content from those olives. These will give you a, another distinct flavor, a different flavor than some of those. And every olive is a little different and distinct into itself. Uh, our one important thing that I want to mention is that there are two ways for you to eat fresh olives or consume uh, fresh olives. And that's either in the form of olive oil, fresh olive oil, or in the form of it being canned and processed. Uh, you cannot just take an olive from the tree and eat it. It is not... Probably the a, best way to describe it yeah, is very bitter. Very it's, bitter. It's, it's a terrible yes. taste. So, yes, yeah. There um, is no goes, good taste. Yeah, there. <laughs> there is not. It goes through that process there. So, yeah, very important to talk about those uh, processes. And one of the other fun things you do, Pat, is obviously besides being a grower, you also have a distribution center. When I say distribution center, you have a fruit stand. Yeah, we have folks can come get a hold of a lot of the products that you produce here. Talk a little bit about that. Yes, our retail market is a Bella Fruta, and uh, we handle uh, the green ripe olives, or the black ripe olives. We uh, have uh, our olive oil that we uh, mill ourselves at our own mill. Uh, uh, carry all of those uh, and also fresh green olives from the tree where people can buy them so they can uh, process themselves. They can 
uh, put them to the. So you actually process. can buy it by the bucket uh, bucket load if you buy, would like. They can buy the by the pound <laughs> and uh, process their own olives uh, and and can them in jars for their own for their own use. Well, great. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Pat. Appreciate you explaining a little bit more about the California olive. My pleasure. <laughs> My pleasure. And we uh, invite everyone to try in uh, both ways, uh, or all three ways, is uh, ripe black olives, ripe green olives, and this olive oil. And uh, we appreciate that very much. Well, good. Thank yeah. you so much, Pat. Thank you. Olive trees are commonplace throughout the San Joaquin Valley. Personally, I have seven trees and I have no idea what to do with the fruit. To help me with the olive curing process, I have Marie Antonio with the UC Cooperative Extension Master Gardeners Program. Marie, thanks for joining me. Well, thank you very much. It's a well, pleasure. You're here to tell me that olive curing is probably not as complicated as maybe I thought it was. No, it really is. It's quite simple. Um, I happen to be Greek, so I'm, I'm going to do the Greek method. Okay, that works for me. And the Greeks don't use lye. Um, which is, is very common in, in olive curing and it's detailed yep. and you have to be careful and things like that. Well, the Greeks are, you know, they're, they're pretty laid back. So we, we, we just throw them in water and salt <laughs> and kind of just, you know, let them do their thing for a while. Well, so, that works for me. Yeah. So the, I'm going to be doing two green and, and black olives. But the first one is the green olives, which personally is my favorite and they are the, they, they really are fun. You take the green olives when um, in October and you um, let me get this out of the way and you all you do is just crack them because you want to break the skin so you can get the um, the bitterness out so you take a rock a rubber mallet is kind of my a hammer I, I like I uh, love the multiple version here. oh yeah and then you know and you just kind of gent gently do it and so you it don't crack the pit People get enthusiastic and crack the pit. You basically do that until all your olives are gone and they're in a bucket of water, just okay. plain water. And then after that, when you've got them all filled up, you wash them and you basically have to wash them for like two weeks. You keep on changing the water and that will get the bitterness out. People don't realize that. But About every 24 hours you said. Yeah, you and if you want to speed up the process and you re if you really kind of, you know, you can do it every day. And okay. you'll, you'll see, you'll see when the, um, when the bitterness starts coming out, it, it gets the, the water gets the kind of uh, cloudy and, okay. and there's kind of, a, you, you almost feel it in your hands, a acidic kind of okay. thing. Okay. But I kind of made up a little thing, trick because of draining the water every day. You can do five gallon buckets if you're enthusiastic or, or you know, any size, you know, um, food grade plastic is a good thing to use, something non-corrosive. But, but because um, trying to drain it, I came up with this method. This is just two buckets together. You can do a five pound, but I drilled holes in it. So it became a sieve. So all you have to do is just rinse the water like that. And, and you don't have to have, you know, olives flying all over your house. You might have to patent that. That's a pretty good idea. Know, it's kind of, kind, of, <laughs> kind of snazzy. I'm kind of proud of that. So, and then once, and then you put a plate over it so it doesn't get air okay. because, you know, things can discolor. It doesn't change the taste. Yep. So, you know, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. But it, it does look nicer when, they, when they, they're not discolored. Okay. And they will ch turn that color from this bright green to that darker color. Wow, okay. Yeah, and that's just natural. But literally um, two weeks in the bucket here, yeah. changing the water, and yeah. you've pretty much got through the process. Basically, the only thing you want to do is to keep them. And so to keep them, you put them in a brine. And the Greeks are very practical about that. You know, measurements. Who does measurements? <laughs> Uh, if you this is this has water in it with quite a bit of, of, of regular plain salt I put about a half a fourth of a cup if not more and you just dump all the salt in let That's it dissolve okay. and a regular egg will will, will sink always does yeah. right That's how you know it's a fresh regular egg I just got this right out of my refrigerator. If it has a brine, if it's in salt water, just like you, you float more. Yeah, floats, if you've yeah. ever been in the Mediterranean in Cyprus, you float. It, it has, they have quite a bit of salt there. Okay. It's just beautiful. So, um, so once it floats, you you know you have a heavy brine, okay. and then you fill it up in a jar. You fill up the olives and put the the brine in, and then put lemon slices and and um, grape leaves on the top, so it doesn't get discolored and things and and um, it stays really nice. Okay. And you pack it and you put it in the refrigerator. I don't can because I'm not that good at it, I guess, or something. I put these in the refrigerator okay. and they're in such a heavy brine they will keep for at least a year. And you can see there's there's lemon underneath it and and uh, 
and um, and great. So we just the grape leaves. We're yeah. able to then take that just straight out of the fridge yes. and go through this process well, right and, here. And this is really simple. You just rinse rinse okay. the olives, and you can take out as much um, salt as you want. Taste them. See if they're too salty for you. Um, see, and, and then I put my marinade. And you can do other marinade, but this is a traditional Cypriot marinade, which is um, um, lemon, garlic, um, olive oil, and crushed coriander. And that's what this is here, is the coriander seeds are from the um, cilantro um, uh, tree. And the Cypriots are very, use it quite a bit, and it really is very nice. And you just kind of crush them, and it has that lovely flavor. I love that smell. Yeah, yeah. it just has, and with a garlic. And then, you know, you've got to get the crusty bread and, and dip the marinade. I'm incredibly impressed, though. Like I said, the, the salt, you said you rinsed it out. Don't hardly taste yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can make it salty if you want, but yeah. I, I think it's better when, when you, you can, re, re, you know, leach things out. But there is, um, again, um, my taste yeah. is, those are incredible. I like to say, I, there is no difference that I can tell from the normal curing process versus your water-based oh, process. Well, thank so. you, thank you. Uh, on to the black olives. So okay. once once you pick these in October, these, I picked these just today, and they're a little bit a little bit too young. You want you want them to have them rather thin-skinned. Okay. But um, but these will probably be fine okay. because once you pick, you think you picked everyone from the tree, and that never happens. You look up, and there's just all these. And they're a whole lot easier to spot when they turn. Yes, black Yes, when like they that. turn black, okay. and and it's like, what do you do with the black olives besides destroy your your driveway? What you do, and, and this is Vasily Papu taught me how to do this years ago. You take a pillowcase, a burlap bag. This is, and you can't reuse the pillowcase. Just everyone has yep. an old cotton pillowcase. I seem to collect them, and you th actually just throw in the and then sort them. Make sure they're nice. There are no dimples or okay. you know they're not good. And just throw them in, and then you take rock salt, and this is again salt, and you just pour it in, and tie this up and lay this and with a bucket underneath it because it will drip. Okay. It will leach out the bitterness, and okay. that's one way. And it kind of you know kind of dehydrates them. It makes them, and I do have some, this is just examples, these are kind of extreme because they've been in rock salt forever, but they turn into these little, they, they Large raisins. Yeah, large it's, raisins. Yeah. But you know, these are a little bit extreme, but I, I use these as examples. Yeah. But they actually will turn into those. And what you do is once, you, you, and you have to taste it, you know, once the bitterness comes out, yeah. you can taste it. Yeah. And, um, and then you can blanch that in boiling water or just water and rinse out the salt and then drizzle olive oil on it and those are the olive cured olives is that what they call and completely different taste in the green D completely ones. different taste completely in the different. Yeah, yeah people think they're from a different tree they're not yeah so <laughs> well this has been incredibly informative marie i can't thank you enough You're i welcome. gotta go home and try this on my own tree you should you <laughs> should i mean yeah we're quite proud of our olives the green well What's, what's not like about olives? They're fabulous. I agree. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you right. so much, Marie. You. I appreciate you oh, coming yeah. on and sharing this little pleasure. secret with us. Okay. All right. To speak about the history of olives, Elizabeth Lavelle has joined me. Hey, Ryan. You know, olives are one of the oldest trees from 8,000 years or more in history, and also one of the oldest that's been cultivated. The first olives were actually picked from a shrub. They, they weren't a full-blown tree that we're seeing today like these here. And in California, olives actually started in the late 18th century. And at that time, the Spanish Jesuits brought olive cuttings to the missions in Mexico. And as the missionaries headed north, so did the olives. And you'll find at all 21 missions, they all had olive harvest and they used them to make olive oil. Here we have these amazing pictures. These are from the Roding Packing House about 1915. Doesn't this look like it's straight out of old Sicily? I mean, you could just imagine them in the rolling and dusty hills of Sicily finding these guys with this hand is all made out of wood and metal and he's one guy there he's standing up there grading the olives by hand so here he has different levels of boxes and you can see how they're coming down and if you look very carefully in this photo you will actually see the word olive oil so this is the earliest photo that i've been able to find that had the processing for olive oil and in a little while we're going to see how it's done today it looks quite a bit different than it did in these days
although probably the flavor hasn't changed that much. So Ryan, as we've looked at our historical photographs, we see sometimes how very much things have changed, and sometimes they haven't changed very much at all. And as you see of this photograph, these are some olive trees maybe 90, 95 years ago. You can see that they look a lot like the recruiting trees that we saw a little while ago. They look very similar, and I'm actually headed off to see how we do things just a little bit differently today. And I know Pop would have loved being there for that. Well, thank you so much, Elizabeth. I've loved learning the history of the California olive. We'll see you soon, Ryan. We've headed over to the Bari Olive Oil Company in Dinuba. With me, I have owner Kyle Zawaski. Kyle, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, happy to be here. Well, let's start off with, we got these uh, big trees in back of us that look a little bit different where I just came from. We were looking at table olives, right. and now we're gonna be looking at olive oil. Yeah. Explain to me what we have going on. Well, what we have here, we have some trees that are grown specifically for the oil, and it's considered a dwarf tree, and they're grown specifically so they can be machine harvested. The olives tend to be a little bit smaller, and uh, for us, that's actually advantageous um, because the smaller the olive, sometimes the, the greater the oil content. Uh, we have less water that we have to deal with and we can, we can actually extract a greater amount of oil from it. What I just picked up, what you said, is a, a dwarf tree. What does that mean? It just means it's a little bit smaller tree. Uh, these, these trees are grown uh, very much like a vineyard would be, okay. as, as you've seen. Yeah. And uh, they, uh, they're grown um, uh, about six feet apart in the row, and the row spacing is about 11 feet. So they're grown very much like a hedge. They have a, a single wire trellis system that allows us to uh, drive right over the top of them and machine harvest. Let's talk about the cultural practices of what it takes to make a crop of olive oil. Uh, the trees we see behind us are obviously evergreen, so mm -hmm. they're green throughout the year. Yes. But mm -hmm. when does the actual fruit start to start to grow and go uh, from there? The fruit starts, to, first we have bloom in uh, early to mid-May, depending on where you are in the state. And then we'll see fruit start coming on in early June. And uh, right now it's early October and we're just starting our harvest. So and our harvest will run through about the uh, early December. One thing I like what you said about these trees is that, I mean, why it's very difficult to make the right olive oil. These trees are actually fairly easy to take care of in comparison to other crops. Yeah, they're, they're, they're unlike anything else we farm. <laughs> these actually like to be neglected a little bit. Uh, much, much uh, very similar to wine grapes. Sometimes the more you mistreat it, the better the quality of oil or wine would be. And so we actually deficit irrigate these. Uh, we have very little, very minimal uh, hand labor that's involved with pruning and whatnot. Very little sprays involved in it and uh, produces a very high quality oil. And when you talk about the crops that you guys grow, talk about a little bit about your history as far as in, in the agricultural industry yeah. as well as the other crops you do. So grow. the Bari brand has been around since 1936 and uh, we're one of the oldest olive oil companies in the state of California. Um, and uh, our family purchased the, uh, the company in uh, 2008 and uh, my brother and I are fifth generation to farm on our ranches and uh, we had the opportunity, when the opportunity came up to, to buy the company, it just seemed to make a really nice fit between the two families. So. Well, that's great. Well, let's head on indoors. We're going to see how you press these things. Okay, absolutely. Well, Kyle, we've seen them come off of the tree. What happens to them after that? So after they came off the tree, uh, we brought them into our facility. And uh, what you're going to see here is you're going to see the olives being dumped into a hopper. Uh, they're going to ride an uh, elevator up to a leaf blower. And what that's going to do is it's going to pull off any loose leaves or branches that might be in there. We want to minimize the amount of foliage that gets into the machine. From there, they're going to be washed. And uh, they're going to fall through a series of traps. But as you saw with the machine harvest, sometimes you get a bolt or pick up something that we don't want in, in the machinery, of course. And there's a series of traps that the olives will fall through. So if something came off the equipment, we can make sure it doesn't end up in the, in the olive oil. So after it's washed, it'll ride another um, uh, elevator up to uh, the crusher and what the crusher is going to do is it's going to uh, grind the olives into a fine paste and it's going to force that paste through a screen and that's, um, that paste will then fall into what we call the malaxer. Uh, when, the, when the pumice or the paste is in the malaxer, you can about, spend about 40 to 50 minutes in there. Uh, just depends on how much, uh, how ripe the olive is and there's a lot of variables that go into how long it, it spends in there. Uh, but during this time the oil will release from the pumice and uh, if, if you look here, you'll see that uh, we have some paste that's a little bit duller. That's what was just filled in. You see some that's a little bit shinier. That's what's been in here for about 40 minutes. And when you say everything, it grinds up even the pit included? Pit and everything. Wow. In fact, it's interesting. Uh, there's actually a fair amount of oil in the pit. And the healthiest, oh, the healthiest oil with the highest polyphenol counts uh, comes from the pit itself, right. from the oil container. Never, never knew that. Yeah. <laughs> 
So from there, we'll take the uh, the pumice and we'll run it through a centrifuge. And what that centrifuge is going to do is it's going to separate the, the solids from the from the liquids. And uh, our, our centrifuge spins about 3,500 RPM, and it forces the solids to the front where we pump it out into a trailer and back and uh, haul that off to a dairy for cattle feed. And the oil is forced to the back, and we run, we actually transfer that into another machine, um, the final machine you'll see. And that's basically a vertical version of the centrifuge. Um, it spins quite a bit faster, and that gives it one final cleansing. We add a little bit of water to that process just to make sure we get any last little bit of grit out of there. And uh, what you see coming out of that machine is fresh, clean, edible oil. What surprises me when you talk about the olive is that, it, again, off of the tree, it's actually pretty horrible to taste. Yeah. And Not get something just, you want to pop in your mouth. Absolutely. Yeah. And yet going through this fairly simplistic process, you're able to have an amazing product. Exactly right. It, it's one of, the, one of the wonders of the world. Yeah. So. And one thing about olive oil that there's there's terminologies that just aren't used in other types of industries in the ag industry. So talk a little bit about what those uh, what those terms mean and how the consumer knows what they're getting in that product. Yeah, and this is this is where there's a lot of confusion. Um, uh, there's a few terms out there. Uh, the two prominent ones are extra virgin and virgin, and sometimes there's some, um, some confusion as to what that actually means. Extra virgin and virgin actually happen at the same time. Uh, the raw olives come into the press. Uh, they're given a first press or a cold press, which are common terms that you hear. Um, but there's two qualities of oil that can come out of that, a high quality and a low quality. The high quality we call extra virgin. The lower quality uh, we would call virgin. And there's uh, certain aspects that go into that that, that might, um, might make one a virgin versus an extra virgin. Uh, the quality of the fruit when they start the process has a lot to do with it. Maybe there's some frost damage or things like that. Those oils would tend to be a lower grade oil and be uh, deemed a virgin oil. Now when we talk about the oil, I think one of the most important things about olive oil is that California label in front of it. It makes a big difference. It makes a big difference. As you tasted uh, uh, in, the, in the press here, um, uh, we have a tremendous advantage quality wise. Uh, we produce some of the greatest, uh, greatest uh, olives here in the state, uh, both table and for oil, and um, we have just uh, some of the highest standards set in the world. Well, we've done a lot of talking about the olive oil. Now I think it's time that we sample some of your very good blends okay. here. So let's see what we have here in stock okay. and what you're going to tell me a little bit about your specific brand here. Okay, so uh, this is uh, where Bari is maybe a little bit different than some of the other brands out there. Um, a lot of companies actually blend their different varietals together. Uh, we grow three different varieties, or three of our main varieties that we grow is a Arbicina, an Arbisana, and a Corniki. And each oil has a very different flavor profile. Uh, many companies like to put them together to get one common flavor profile for all their oils. We think that the American consumer really appreciates the nuances much like you do in wine. Yeah. And so the first one I'm going to have you try is the Arbisana. And you're going to notice a nice mild butteriness to it. It's not very pungent. Doesn't have too much burn in the back. That's the first thing I got, the buttery taste uh -huh. to it. It's just a really thick, it's, it's yeah. a little bit different than what I tasted out in the right. process facility there. Yeah. Uh, one thing when you, when you talk about what's the proper way, I mean, uh, wine drinkers have their proper way of sampling. Mm -hmm. There is a proper way for there is. olive oil. Yeah, the best way to do it is to actually put some in your mouth, kind of swish it around a little bit, and then suck air in uh, through your teeth. Like, sounds a little funny when you do it, but when everybody in the room is doing it, it's not quite so bad. What's excited me about this product is the fact that it's just so different through the stages it goes through your mouth. I right. mean, from the time you initially taste it uh -huh. to the time that it goes down your throat, right. completely different Completely taste. different. Yep. Yeah, that's fantastic. Next one I'm going to have you taste is our Korniki. And you're going to notice a little bit more earthiness to this one, a little bit more of a stronger olive flavor. It's actually one of our more popular olive oils. Completely different. It's completely different. And it's um, there's a little bit more of a peppery spice uh -huh. kick to bit. it to the uh -huh. end. But uh, it's definitely a little thinner. You, you yes. felt the thickness of the uh -huh. first one. This uh -huh. one, I... every olive has a little different viscosity, and much like wine, you drink different wines with different foods. You use uh, different olive oils with different foods that you make. Okay. So, last one we're going to try is our Arbicina. Okay. And this one's going to have a little bit more punch to it. A little bit more punch. Yeah. So you saved that one for last, then. <laughs> I think you'll see the differences as we as we moved up. It'll be just a little bit more intense. Yeah, I, I, I can taste I, that. I can a taste bit that. More yeah. to it. Uh, again, a completely different taste completely, when you first yeah. sample it versus what you uh -huh. have at the end there. 
Uh, but yeah, like I said, it, the variety of mm -hmm. something I would have never expected. You yeah. just think olive oil is olive oil, right. but there's some different taste to them all. So we actually produce uh, five different regular extra virgin olive oils, uh, one of them being certified organic, and then we also have a mission that you haven't tasted here. And then we have eight infused olive oils that we do. So we're a little bit different in that we have we have to actually offer the consumer about 13 different olive oils. Where can consumers find your product at? Well, the best place to get it as fresh as possible is to visit us right here on the farm. We've got a small tasting room that we're standing in now. And if you're out here, we'd be happy to show you the pressing process uh, uh, if we happen to be milling at the time. Uh, or you can visit us online at bariolivoil.com. And the list of locations? Yeah, there's a list on there where you can find us in the valley. Well, thanks, Kyle. This has been an amazing journey. I learned so much about olive oil I had no clue about before this. So yeah, appreciate it. Out. Absolutely. Anytime, Bye. Ryan. We've squeezed everything we can out of this episode, and now all of you know everything you need to know about the California olive industry. I hope you'll join me next time for more Valley's Gold. Valley's Gold is produced through a partnership between the Fresno County Farm Bureau and Valley PBS. Production of this program is made possible in part by a grant from E&J Gallo Winery.